In the last video, we laid out the eight views on screen for our tip calculator application. In this video, we want to add the business logic to actually make our app interactive. What we'd like to be able to do is when the user scrubs on the seek bar, we want to update the tip percent label. And when they enter in a base amount, then we want to take that value and then compute the tip and total amount. In particular, you'll notice that there is no submit button. So as soon as the user changes the base amount or the tip percent, we want to dynamically compute the tip and total amount when anything changes. So as a first exercise, what I want to be able to do is as soon as the user changes the value on the seek bar, I want to be able to update the tip percent label. So in Android Studio, the first thing we'll do is get a reference to the views on the screen that we actually need to be able to read data from or modify. And there are actually five different widgets on the screen that we care about the tip percent label, and then all four of the components on the right side of the screen. So in Android Studio, the way we'll do this is declare a bunch of variables up here for each of the components. So for example, we have the edit text, that'll be ET base amount, and the type of this is going to be a type edit text. So don't worry too much about the syntax here if it's confusing. All we're saying is this is a private variable. It's a late initialization because we're going to initialize it inside of the onCreate method and not in the constructor, which is why it's late initialization. It's a variable and that we're calling it et base amount. The convention I follow is that the name of the variable is exactly equal to the name of the ID. So now in the onCreate, after the set content view, we are going to say et base amount find view by ID r.id et base amount. And we're going to repeat this now for the other four components on the screen. So we have a seek bar tip, and the type here is seek bar. And then we have TV tip percent. That's going to be a text view. And then we have two more text views. One is TV tip amount, and then the other is TV total amount. Now I'll just pull out references to all these inside of onCreate. And finally, we have the total amount. So coming back to our objective, the first thing we want to do is when the user scrubs on the seek bar, we want to be notified of changes of that user input and then update the TV tip percent label to indicate that. So actually, let me update the name of the variable here, just be TV tip percent label for consistency. Wait, and the way we get notified of changes on the seek bar is by adding a listener on it. So we'll say seek bar tip dot set on seek bar change listener. And now we need to tell the Android system what should happen when the seek bar is changed. And the syntax here is we're going to say object seek bar dot on seek bar change listener. And then we're going to define this class inside here. And Android Studio will help us implement this you'll have this red underline under object. So tap on that red light bulb and tap on implement members. There are three methods that we have to override in order to comply with the definition of this on seek bar change listener. And Android Studio will help us with that. And don't worry too much again if the syntax is confusing. The details here are that we are defining an anonymous class which implements this interface. So if I go to the definition here, you can see that this is a public interface which has those three methods exactly that we have overridden. And now it's our job to tell the system what should be happening when each of these methods are called. And actually, we don't really care about on start tracking touch or on stop tracking touch. So I'm going to remove the to do's here and just leave an empty implementation. Before we update the UI, let's first add a log statement in Android to more easily figure out what's going on. So I'll write log.i. And this is a method that takes in two parameters. The first one is a string, which I'll call tag, I'll define later. And the second one is also a string, which is a message of our log statement. And I'll say on progress changed, which is a method name, along with the progress, which is a current value of the seek bar. So let's define this tag. I'm going to go up to the top of the class and define a private const val tag. And the convention here is that whenever you have any kind of logging, the tag is typically going to be the class name. All right, let's run it. 
So the idea here is that every time the progress is changed on the seek bar, which means that the user is scrubbing, we will print out the current value shown in logcat, which is where the logs get outputted. So let's open up logcat, open up the emulator, and the logs that we care about are the ones from only our application, which is com, com, rkpande, tippy. And we also only care about info level logs because that is what log.i represents, info level logs. We also only care about logs which have this particular tag, which is main activity. So let's add main activity as a filter. And here, as we change the seek bar, we can see how we get one line of logcat outputted, and it represents exactly what is the current indicator of the seek bar showing. So if we go all the way up to the maximum, we see 30 as we expect, and if we come all the way back down, we go to zero. So now let's update the UI. And in particular, we want to update the TV tip percent label to indicate the current progress of the seek bar. So we'll say TV tip percent label, the text attribute of that, we will set that equal to the progress. But actually we want the progress to be represented as a string, not an int. And also we want to concatenate a percent sign after it. So we'll say dollar sign progress, which is how we do string interpolation in Kotlin, similar to what we did in a log statement, and then add a percent sign at the end. Let's try it. So as we scrub on the seek bar, you can see how the TV tip percent label does get updated in lockstep with the current progress of the seek bar, which is great. One improvement here though, is that initially we are not indicating any tip percent in the label. And so to fix that, let's define one more constant, which we'll call initial tip percent. So we'll have a private const val initial tip percent and we'll set that equal to 15. So initially the default tip is going to be 15%. So with that defined as a constant, before we do anything in the listener, right in the onCreate method, we'll say seek bar tip dot progress is equal to initial tip percent. And we also want to update the label appropriately. So we'll say TV tip percent label dot text is equal to initial tip percent with the percent sign after. Now, when we run the app, we should see instead of the blank tip percent label, we should see 15% like we do. And the progress bar indicator is exactly in the middle of the width of the whole seek bar. Next, similar to how we are able to react to changes in the seek bar, we also want to be able to react to changes in the edit text. So there's an analogous method on the ET base mount we'll call add text change listener. And the syntax will be similar. We pass in an object here, which is an anonymous class, which is an implementation of the text watcher. And we'll have Android Studio help us once again. There are some methods that we have to override. So I'm going to tap on that red light bulb and implement the members. There are three, I'll override all of them. And then similar to before, the only thing that we care about is after text change. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the body of the implementation here. And just to get a better understanding of what's happening here, again, let's add a log statement. Say after text changed dollar sign s. All right, let's try it. So dollar sign s is the parameter passed in, and that is actually what the user is typing at that moment. Let's run this. Let's open up logcat once again. All right, so like before, if I modify the seek bar, you can see that it is changing appropriately. And then if I add in a value into the Edit text, you can see 800, it is being updated appropriately in logcat. Two quick notes. First, I sometimes see students will get tripped up when they invoke functions in Kotlin. The MSG that you're seeing when we call log.i is a hint from Android Studio about what that parameter represents. So if you actually type MSG, that will lead to a compile error. So just make sure you don't do this. Second, I want to demystify what the object keyword means. So these object expressions, like we're using twice so far, are examples of how to create anonymous classes, which are one-time use classes that are commonly used to implement interfaces. So we have both text watcher and on seek bar change listener as interfaces defined by the Android system. And these methods that we're overriding will automatically be invoked for us when the user takes the appropriate action on the underlying edit text or seek bar. So now we have all the ingredients in place to actually make this app functional. Whenever the edit text changes, I'm going to call a method called compute tip and total. And this is actually what will take the values from the edit text and seek bar and then update the tip and total amount appropriately. So 
this method doesn't exist yet. But again, let's leverage the utility of Android Studio and have Android Studio create this function for us inside of main activity. And there are a couple things that have to happen in this method. First, we want to get the value of the base and tip percent. Second, we'd like to compute the tip and total. And third, we need to update the UI to show those values. So to get the value of the base and tip, that's pretty straightforward. We just look at the added text, so et base amount, grab the text, and then call to string on it. And then on the string, we know what's going to be a currency, like a decimal. So we'll call to double on it in order to turn it into a number that we can work with. And we'll call this base amount. And then similarly for the tip percent, we want to get the value of the progress on the seek bar. So there's an attribute called progress, and that'll be saved in a variable that I'm going to call tip percent. Okay, next we want to compute the tip and total amount. So the tip amount is going to be the base amount times the tip percent divided by 100. So for example, if the base amount is $100, I went out for a $100 meal, and the tip percent is 20, then I expect the tip amount to be $20. So that'll be 20 divided by 100 is 20% times 100, and that gives me $20. So that'll be tip amount. And then we have the total amount. And the total amount is simply going to be the base amount plus the tip amount. Okay, finally, we need to update the UI. And again, this turns out to be pretty straightforward because we have a reference to the two text views which show the tip and total amount, which is TV tip amount. And we're gonna set the text attribute there to be tip amount. And this is gonna throw an error because tip amount is a number, it's a double, right? But we actually require something called a car sequence. And to give it a car sequence, we can just call to string on this value. And then similarly, we call, we need to say, TV total amount, set the text attribute here to be the total amount to string. Uh, and this should be a plus sign. Okay, so this is the whole brain of our application. So if we run this, then what we're doing is anytime that the added text value has changed, we're gonna call this method and we should be updating the UI to have the correct amount for the tip and total amount. Okay, so we have 15% for the tip. If I add in $100 here, then you do see immediately we get the correct tip and total computation. And we would like to have the same logic get executed if I change the seek bar, the tip percent. And that turns out to be really easy because we've abstracted all the logic away into this method. So I'm going to call compute tip and total right here in on progress changed. All right, so if we try this now, we should have a pretty functional app. Okay, so similar to before, if I put in 100 here, we do correctly compute 115. And if I change the tip percent, you can see it does appropriately get updated. All right, so this is working actually pretty well, but there are two things that I think are incorrect or could be improved. So just take a moment right now, think about what are two improvements that you could do to the app that we have right now. Try playing around with it, see if you can identify any issues. Okay, so the first improvement that we can make is actually a bug. So Notice what will happen now if I backspace on the base amount so that there's nothing there. So you can see the app actually crashed. So if we look at logcat, let's take a look at what actually was the error. So I'm going to scroll up to the very top of the stack trace. And you can see here we have a number format exception. This is the important part. There's an empty string. And, you, and the stack trace tells us exactly where the issue happened. It's on main activity line 58. And so the issue that's happening is that when the edit text has an empty value, then it doesn't make sense to try and convert an empty string into a double. And so the very first thing we should be doing here is actually checking if et base amount dot text, if that is empty, then we need to do an early return. Additionally, we should be clearing out the values of the TV tip and total amount. Because if the edit text is empty, that means there's nothing to tip on, and we should be showing nothing for those two text views. Then we call return so that none of the rest of the function will get executed. The second improvement we'll make is about formatting the output of the tip and total amount. So it's not that noticeable when we enter in 100 for the base amount, 
But if we add in 100.9, then you can see that the total amount becomes very long and unwieldy. Because we're dealing with currency, we should really be mandating that there are exactly two decimal points in both the tip and total amount. And the way we'll do that is right here. Instead of just calling tree string, we want to format this string before we put it into the text view. So the way we do that is by using this format method. So we define the format like this, %.2f, which means we only want two numbers after, after the decimal point, dot .format, and we pass in the tip amount. And then similarly for the total amount, say %.2f, .format. Let's try it. So hopefully now, in this scenario, we should actually end up with 116.04 instead of this very long decimal. So when I type in 100, right away you can see, instead of only having one decimal point, now we have two. And the true test is when I type in 100.9. Now the display of this is way better. We have 116.04 rather than that huge decimal, which becomes unreadable. So at this point, we have a very functional app. What we've done is gotten references to the relevant views on the layout, and then added listeners to the seek bar and to the edit text because there's no submit button. Anytime there's any change in the seek bar or the edit text, we are dynamically computing the tip and total amount and then updating the views appropriately in this compute tip and total amount. So in the next video, what I want to show you is some style improvements along with a way to personalize it and add a really cool animation. So I'll see you in the next one.